Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Datterson Charles, because today is the uh, 4th of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so uh, now then, uh, just as always, before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So it'll take you to this, to this page, which we, as I said, update on a daily basis. So. Um, now then, a uh, quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. As we can see, the yep, the number continues to rise. Um, however, as you can see that uh, comparing it to the morning figure, it has risen just um, by a couple of tenths of tenths of thousands. So, uh, in comparison to the previous days, it's f it seems to be fine. However, as uh, if we look at the daily cases, as we can see. For example, it continues to move up and down as it continues to kind of ride, uh, go as a roller coaster ride here. And uh, yep, uh, yesterday we've, we we can see that we've managed to reach a peak. Um, so maybe today it could ease off a little bit and could drift uh, lower. So let's let's see uh, tomorrow how and how and where this number will be. Uh, now then, jumping into a few indices here. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now I talked about this one this morning. Um, I was basically telling you to keep close eye on uh, the um, some of these levels that I've mentioned before. Now, um, one of our main targets right now is, of course, this 12,886, 87 zone, roughly around there, marked by the lowest point of December 2019. Um, however, today, as you can see, the, yes, the index did push higher. However, it's, it's struggling to uh, continue moving higher and, and struggling to actually remain above the Mm, above the, the uh, yesterday's high and uh, the yesterday's high was uh, around here near the 12,507 zone so the and the index is currently trading uh, slightly below that now again we'll keep an eye on this because if eventually it um, fails to let's say close above this area then uh, well maybe a bit of a correction a bit of a setback here could be possible and this is what I talked about previously um, first of course we'll keep an eye on the highest point of March near the uh, 12,273 territory here but even if it drifts a little bit lower still the bulls have a chance to step in here near this upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May and uh, yep uh, if that is broken then well I mean further declines are possible however uh, like I said uh, the bulls do have a chance to step in here and drive this one higher uh, we do have a few areas of, of, of potential good support here uh, but if let's say like this if the daily candle stays today below the uh, yesterday's uh, yesterday's high near the 12,507 zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, um, yep, maybe a bit of a, a setback here could be possible. Um, now then, jumping into Nasdaq 100. Um, so this one, and let me just remove the arrow here, but basically look at this beautiful move here and uh, yesterday the, na the index managed to hit the all-time high uh, the previous all-time high and you can see then retraced back down now if we look at the cash index and where it is currently balancing at let me just quickly double check it 
and uh, yep, that's currently sitting at around 9,663 mark. So basically, uh, the index is drifting back down. And uh, in a way, let's see if this candle, if yesterday's candle, if yesterday's daily candle will be seen as a possible reversal signal here. Because as you can see, it's almost like a doji here. Um, and uh, if so, then yep, uh, a, a drop lower could be possible. But even then, we will still aim for the lower side of the rising wedge here but again of course as I've mentioned previously guys um, these um, these patterns tend to break to the downside according to all the TA rules so uh, but we cannot really talk about any downside yet until we get a break of this lower side of the rising wedge and then yes we will take it from there um, now in order to aim for higher levels well it's gonna be a very uh, straightforward uh, kind of move here we will wait for a break above this 9,737 zone and only then aim for higher levels because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep uh, further further acceleration to the upside could be possible however we need that confirmation break first until then we're not really doing anything here because as you can see we do have ourselves a possible uh, rising wedge, uh, which, uh, according to all the TA rules, tends to break to the downside. However, we cannot really talk about the downside yet. Uh, and as we need to see that confirmation break first. Uh, gold. Now, gold is a bit of a tricky one here. Now, uh, I talked about gold uh, this week, and basically um, what I was talking about was that in a way, uh, in order for us to aim for lower levels first, we need to see a, a violation of this uh, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of April. And in addition to that, we would like to see a nice good drop and ideally a daily close below the 1694 zone, which as you can see yesterday, we had a, uh, a drop below this, but we didn't get a close today. Uh, it came very close to testing this area again, but reversed back to the upside and is now back uh, trading back above this upside support line. So in a way, um, we're not going to really do anything here because still for us, the more comfortable level would be from around here, somewhere from around 1748. So a nice good break above this and ideally a nice good daily close above this could do the trick here for more buyers because as you can see previously in the past year, it ke this area keeps getting tested. However, the daily candle is failing to close above it. So that's why we would prefer to see not only a break, but also a daily close above this 1748 zone. In terms of the downside, we need to see a nice a good daily close below the 1694 zone before examining uh, examining lower areas. Until then, we're not really touching this one and we're just observing the price action. Uh, similar story here. Now, previously when I covered silver, I was talking about this, uh, this move, basically what I was saying that um, if we get a break above the 17.60 zone, then yes, this could travel higher a little bit, but might not reach the highest point of this year near the 18.9495 zone. And it could find resistance somewhere around here and then drift back down. But what I was saying in that scenario was that if this area right here, the 17.60, continues to provide decent support, then we could see a nice rebound here and a push maybe in this this time maybe the the um, the precious metal would would be able to move higher and uh, test this 18.94 zone so the the thing is that for now we're not really going to do anything here because we want to see how this is going to play out and where this daily candle is going to end and probably maybe also ideally we would like to see a um, where where the weekly candle is going to end in relation to this level the 17.60 because if eventually we see a close below this area then yes we could consider a slightly larger correction to the downside towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March uh, but around here this is where the big battle could become uh, could happen and um, and uh, between the bulls and the bears because uh, we will see if this upside support line has any significance and will it, if it'll hold the price from dropping lower but again that's in all this in the scenario if we get a drop and we get a daily close below the 17.60 zone for now 
we're I will say that we're probably neutral and we're just observing and we're waiting for uh, a better in indication of where this uh, precious metal would like to go next. Um, Litecoin. Now I looked at Litecoin uh, this week and to be honest it's just a quick update because not much is happening here. Uh, yes we are slightly in the positive territory however uh, we are still waiting for um, a push above this barrier here uh, this 50.74 zone in order to aim for higher levels because a nice good pop above this area would confirm a first of all would confirm a forthcoming higher high and could also place the uh, the price above the 200 day EMA which maybe more buyers could see as a good thing as a positive sign and uh, start jumping in here again but uh, until then to be honest uh, we're not really doing anything here with the upside and uh, yep we'll wait for that confirmation break first in terms of the downside um, yes similar story we're not going to do anything until we get a violation of this upside support line and in, a, in addition to that uh, we would prefer to wait for a drop well this is where the tricky bit is now We'll start looking at some lower levels if we get a drop below the uh, the current lowest point of this week near the near the 44.18 zone. Uh, but uh, just to get a little bit more comfortable with further declines, maybe a drop below this area here, the the low of the uh, 26th of May could do the trick for more. Uh, or actually, 20 25th of May near the 41.71 zone. And uh, yep, more more sellers could see this as maybe as a good opportunity to step in. So that's why for now uh, we will be very careful here and uh, continue monitoring this area right here. But uh, again, uh, we cannot really do much here until we get that violation of one of these levels here, the ones that I talked about. Because until then, uh, we're it's just neutral. It's just it could continue moving sideways here for a bit. Um, AD and ZD. So I talked about this one yesterday in my Trader's Tea Time and uh, basically here uh, the situation is very, very interesting because after we've managed to reach this uh, level here, the highest point of November, and we've actually managed to overcome it slightly, then near the one, this level is near the 1.0865. Um, the pair then drifted lower. This, this proved to be a very strong area of resistance and now you can see that the, uh, the pair is drifting lower. It's uh, currently uh, balancing near the 1.0865. 0757 zone and in a way um, in a way of, of course this could lead to some further declines but it was as as of as, as I've mentioned yesterday as well ideally we'd like to see at least a daily close below this area before considering some slightly lower levels uh, if we do get a daily close below this, then yes, this could open the door towards uh, further declines. However, be very careful near this 21-day EMA because we don't want to same. Do want we? Uh, well, we we want to be careful and uh, we want to see if we will get the same uh, the same kind of. Um, I, the same scenario as we had here uh, in the end of May, where the 21-day EMA kind of provided decent provided decent support. Um, so that's why, if you're more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a drop below this level here, the low of the 28th of May, near the 1.0668 zone, and then target lower levels. Because until then, uh, we cannot really talk about any uh, downside. Because uh, what we also don't want to see here is this pair starting to range between these two levels between the 1.0668 and the 1.0865 uh, levels so well that's why like I said we'll remain a little bit uh, careful right now and wait for a confirmation break because even with the upside we would wait for a push above the 1.0865 and only then target higher levels. Uh, US dollar against the Japanese yen quick update here because not much is happening to be honest well okay, again it's moving closer to our target near the uh, near the 109.38 zone, which is marked by the high of the 6th of April, uh, or in other words, the highest point of April. And uh, yep, today it did try to make it make its way closer to it. It just fell by a few points of few pips from reaching that area and drifted back down so however uh, it's still probably the bulls are not very disappointed they're seeing this one as a as a temporary correction which in a way could lead the pair towards the uh, the 200 day EMA here or even maybe the 108.08 level but if this area provides decent support then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher where maybe this time this level here the highest point of April could be tested um, 
um, but if this starts uh, dropping back below the 108.08 level then this will place us uh, or this will put us uh, on the neutral side a little bit because um, if we see a drop below this area below the 107.32 then we could consider maybe some lower um, those larger extensions to the downside however until then any move lower could be seen still as a temporary correction before another leg of buying uh, quick update on GBPCHF. Now, I've looked at this one uh, this week, and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line uh, taken from the high of the 13th of December, which got violated, and you can see that the rate continues to kind of, although it is retracing today, um, it still remains above this downside line. So basically this downside line is kind of proving itself to be quite an important one to watch, and uh, let's see if this, uh, if this downside line actually acts as a nice trampoline here for this pair from which the uh, from which GBP CHF could rebound and push higher our main target for now is around the 1.2205 zone which is marked by the highest point of April um, however if that gets broken now this is where it could be get a little bit more exciting for the buyers and the, yep this this move could open the door towards a uh, a further acceleration to the upside uh, where the next uh, potential target is around the 1.2530 zone marked uh, by these lows the low of the 15th of January and also the 4th of February so basically the uh, the lowest point of January and the low of that 4th of February. Um, good potential target here and previously acted as a good area of support. Now it could take the role of resistance. But again, we would need to see a push above this level here, the 1.2205 level first, and then aim for higher levels. But f like I said, today where we're looking here at is this downside line. We want to see how uh, and where the daily candle will end the trading day because um, if it stays above this then yep like I said this could this line this downside line could act as a good trampoline um, but if the the candle drops lower and, and ends the day somewhere below it then maybe not all is good in the bear uh, sorry in the bull block and um, well we'll have to just reevaluate everything again we'll pick up on this pair maybe tomorrow we'll see how everything's kind of playing out here uh, euro GBP um, so I talked about this one as well this, this week and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here the 0 0.8864 which could provide uh, decent support and if it if it does that then we could see a nice rebound and this is exactly what's happening so the pair is now pushing higher um, however uh, as of what I was also mentioning that is still to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels uh, we would like to see a, a push above the 0 0.8995 zone here and ideally we would like to see a daily close above this area uh, because what we don't want to see here is uh, something like this where we had these false breakouts but as you can see we had the false breakout twice here but it still kind of failed to close the daily candle above it and uh, um, this is why we will wait for a daily close first above this 0 0.8995 and then target some higher levels um, with the downside uh, it, we need to see a drop below the 0 0.8864 and also again similar story uh, we need to see a nice daily close below this area uh, in order to aim for lower levels. Um, until then, we're just neutral and we're just observing the price action. Now, finally, Euro USD. So, uh, today we had a bit of data coming out uh, from the ECB. And of course, if you're following that, you have seen that, um, first of all, the interest rates uh, remained interest rates, uh, the ECB interest rates remain the same, so deposit facility rate uh, uh, remained at minus 0.5%, the uh, margin lending facility is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25, and of course the main interest rate uh, was at, at the same zero uh, level. So, um, in a way, not much has changed from, from that perspective, however, as we uh, realized that um, the ECB increased its, uh, the uh, the so-called pandemic emergency purchase program by 600 billion euros now it increased that by uh, so it kind of brought it to a total of one uh, one one trillion and three uh, three hundred and fifty billion euros now of course the market sees this as a positive thing Euro, Euro traders are seeing this as a positive thing as a, a support to the economy uh, to the eurozone um, and this is yep we can see that initially we before the news before the news release 
uh, we, we saw Euro USD drifting lower. However, yep, after that, uh, it reversed back to the upside and is now back to this uh, 1.1237 zone, the one that I talked about earlier. Now, Today we had even over an overshoot above this area, um, but the yep the rate kind of got back to this level. So um, still the idea remains the one the idea that I talked about uh, this morning saying was saying what I was saying that in a way if this barrier continues to provide resistance the 1.1237 continues to provide resistance and that's by the way marked by the high of the 16th of March then we still may see a bit of a correction here. So that's why we're gonna keep an eye on the daily candle today if we see the daily candle staying below this level then yep we, we could aim for a bit of a correction here to the downside where we will examine this 1.1147 level as a good area of a of support uh, from which in a way the pair could rebound and push higher again however like I said uh, for now uh, let's keep an eye on this area let's keep an eye on this 1.1237 zone and uh, yep if uh, although we're seeing a nice push higher above it right now but uh, yeah be very careful for now guys uh, very cautious even let's say if we do see the daily candle staying above this area, of course, this could increase the chances of a potential further acceleration to the upside. However, don't forget that tomorrow we do have the US NFPs. And uh, yep, those are, of course, the forecast right now is uh, for the figure to have improved, uh, for the, NF the NFP figure to have improved. Uh, but if the actual figure comes out even better than the forecast, which is currently sitting at around 8 million, uh, then at uh, minus, eight, uh, minus 8 million, uh, then we could maybe see um, the uh, the Euro, Euro USD kind of selling off sharply. Uh, maybe the investors will be uh, jumping into US dollar, buying US dollars. Um, and uh, yep, we could see this one, this scenario working out nicely. So that's why that's why we're going to be very careful today and tomorrow, of course. Um, and uh, we'll see, uh, again, on one hand, we do have a pair that uh, which continue, wants to continue uh, traveling higher. On the other hand, we have a pair which is uh, slightly overbought even on the daily chart. However, uh, again, uh, comparing to these moves that we had here in the end of February uh, until the beginning of March here, yep, uh, we can see that the, in a way it could travel further north still. So uh, that's why, like I said, let's see how the uh, NFP comes out tomorrow as well. Uh, by the way, the ADP on Wednesday came out uh, better than the forecast, so uh, some like to compare it to the NFP or try to try to gauge the NFP number. Uh, but again, that has been proven many times that those figures uh, do not all the time correlate. So yep, uh, keep that in mind. Um, now, Again, like I said, it's very interesting the situation here right now on the euro dollar. You can see that the the bears are trying to the bears are trying to push the rate back below this 1.1237. So that's why, guys, probably wait this one out and uh, wait to see and see where this day is gonna where this daily candle is gonna end. For now, uh, like I said, we'll we'll take a bit of a neutral stand because what we want us we would like to see this little correction here up until here and then a rebound from this area and a push higher. But again, that's that's what we want. The market doesn't always do uh, what we want it to do. Uh, so yep, that's why we're gonna uh, be very careful and uh, keep keep our eyes our eyes on the daily candle today. So I hope you found it useful, guys, and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. So if you want to join me, uh, or should I should say, if you want to catch my video tomorrow um, after around six o'clock GMT time, uh, and uh, yep, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So have a wonderful evening, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much and bye-bye.